<laughs> Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone out there is having a fantastic day. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about the tale of two countries. Quickly before I start off on uh, on my well my little thing today, <laughs> I just want to say uh, I really appreciate everybody out there. I had a lot of people reach out to me yesterday, uh, phone calls, texts, emails. Um, just wanted to say hi and how am I doing? I think I had a lot of people worried that I was kind of getting into the depression state and everything. That's that's not where I'm at. I am in no danger of anything in that way, if you know what I mean. Um, it's just not a good month. Aprils are not good months. I had to have. I've had a lot of bad things that have happened, and so in April I remember all those bad things. But that doesn't mean that I'm in a bad place now. So that being said, just. Just thank you everybody who reached out. I appreciate it, but uh, don't worry, I'm fine. And speaking of fine, um, here's a little bit of a tale of two countries. Let's talk Canada and the United States. And normally when you talk Canada and the United States, we are synchronized. Pretty much we're in line like for a lot of stances worldwide, um, technology, we have the same technology you guys have. Wait, wait, wait. It's, it, you know, it's the same thing, right? We're pretty, we're pretty dependent on each other. It's, and like, if I go to the United States, I don't feel like I'm in a foreign country, really. Can, U.S. comes to Canada, they don't feel like they're in a foreign country, right? That's how we things go. But, uh, we are definitely on different levels right now when it comes to um, the pandemic. Way, way different levels. Um, you guys are talking about having every single American being able to have at least one dose of the vaccine by the end of this month. <laughs> uh, and uh, almost the entire country by definitely by the 4th of July. Not only everybody have the vaccine, but already be past a few weeks of having so that people will be able to celebrate the 4th of July weekend. Uh, a little bit more, at, more normal, perhaps. Here in Canada, we are not on pace for that in all, at all. At all, at all, at all, at all. Um, you and the United States are closing in on 170 million doses given out so far. Uh, we're, we're on pace right now. Uh, uh, the rankings today are 5.5 are million doses handed out. Um, and yes, you have a bigger populace, but just, just, just take those numbers in 170 million. Five million. <laughs> it's a little bit, that's a big difference. Big, big difference. Um, and the problem is, is our the way we're reporting it and the spins that are everything are on it uh, is pretty funny to me. Uh, today, uh, all the media that I've been listening to, two different radio stations and two different television stations are both coming out. Canada getting a big boost in the vaccine rollout this week. We're getting up to 2 million doses this week. And that, that's how they're, they're portraying this. Big boost. Huge boost to our vaccine rollout. We're getting 2 million doses this week, everybody. It's coming in. It's coming in this week. And I'm going, oh, that's kind of interesting. So if that's a big boost, let's look at how long it will take to get the vaccines to everybody if we keep getting 2 million doses a week. So currently, the remaining popula adult population, and we'll exclude 5%, say, or 10% of those people who don't want the vaccine, who are going to be very iffy on getting the vaccine, it still comes out to we need 30 million people vaccinated after the 5.5 million have already gotten it so far. We still need 30. <laughs> so
So if it requires two doses, uh, that means we will not vaccinate our populace until the end of October at the current rate. You guys are looking at herd immunity close to the end of this month. We're looking at possibly the end of the year. <laughs> and it, it, it's just, it's going to show. And here's, a, here's an easy way to show the differences of what's going on. A lot of people say, well, at least you're getting it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But here's the difference right now. Uh, the United States, you guys are going into the summer. And you guys just announced Delta Airlines had to cancel a bunch of flights. Why? Because they don't have enough staff for the amount of people who want to fly now. That's right. There's more people that want to travel now and fly now than they can actually staff their airplanes. They're having a hard time getting everybody back after the first round of layoffs before. Uh, you know, people go and find other jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Or they need to do the quarantine uh, things or they need to be whatever the reasons is. So they are also announcing that they're eliminating the middle seat. Uh, being empty now so and they say that's months and months ahead of the planned that they were planning to do it just because they're so busy and they need they just need to keep going uh, so there's a tale of one airline that can't keep up with demand eliminating the safety rules for covid on the airplanes basically uh, putting people shoulder to shoulder again from now on and then you come to canada and in Canada, two weeks ago, Delta and Air, not Delta, sorry, um, WestJet and Air Canada just laid off a ton of employees because they, they just don't have the business, because we can't travel. We're not going anywhere. The government had asked us to shut down flights to the Caribbean. So we didn't have flights to the Caribbean. Now, some of them are getting ready to start up, but the new travel restrictions that the government introduced in the meantime with the, with the mandatory COVID hotel stay of over $2,000 a person when you get back and the mandatory uh, quarantine, it, people just aren't traveling. We're not even traveling in Canada because you have quarantine measures if you wanna go to the Nova Scotia, you can't do it. So there's no place really to travel. And so, that's just a tale of our two countries right now. Uh, United States on the verge of opening everything. I'm about to watch a Blue Jays baseball game today and it's taking place in Texas and the stadium is full. It's opening day and there's going to be thousands upon thousands of people in the stadium watching that game. In Canada, they can't even play in their home stadium. We will not let anybody come into the country. Our own baseball team can't come into the country and play a baseball game. Even if we had no fans, they're not allowed to play a baseball game in Canada. That's the tale of two countries right now. So if you wonder why people in Canada are a little frustrated right now, there's the perfect reason. Uh, we only have a populace of 38 million people. Like, we should not be waiting till October to have our vaccines. It should not take that long, but it is. And the news medias are spinning this as a huge positive. That's right, everybody, two million doses this week. That's right. October is, is going to be great. October is going to be great. Just in time for flu season. <laughs> oh, well, guys, in the United States, enjoy your freedoms. Enjoy getting out. Enjoy everyone getting your vaccinations that, if you want it. And being able to start opening things up and living your normal lives. And maybe someday way in the future, we might get there too. <laughs>